Picture this. A man starts up his trusty tractor to go plow his field. After that, he uses tillage equipment to finish preparing the soil. Finally, it's time for the farmer to plant his crops. This farmer was my grandpa. Year after year, he would spend countless hours plowing, disking, and planting crops, which would help feed the cattle. Thinking about the farming methods my grandpa used makes me consider how farming has changed over the years. Before the Great Depression, farmers went over the land with different equipment at least three times before they started planting. After harvest, the ground was then tilled into summer fallow. Crop rotation was rarely used. The nutrients in the soil were quickly depleted and the wind would tear through the bare fields and carry the topsoil away. After the Dust Bowl and Great Depression, practices started to change. It still took several passes over the field before planting was accomplished, but crop rotation was being used more frequently. However, putting fields into summer fallow to prepare for winter wheat planting was still commonly done. Today, things are quite different. Because of no-till planting, my dad can get the job done in fewer hours and without as much equipment. Also, no-till, this cuts down on labor, fuel, and machinery costs. Also, no-till is kinder to the soil because it reduces the amount of soil erosion. Thanks to other conservation ideas, summer fallow has pretty much become a thing of the past. Instead, after harvesting, we leave a crop residue over the ground. This helps to keep the soil in place, retain moisture, and puts nutrients back into the soil as the residue decomposes. Conservation has also improved ranching. Rotational grazing is often used, which can reduce soil erosion and assist in maintaining or improving soil condition as well as grass quality and quantity for resource sustainability. Ranches that have small feedlots, such as my family's, can implement projects like an ag waste management system, which helps keep livestock waste from contaminating water supplies. So how do all of these conservation methods impact our economy? Well, conservation of our natural resources has directly affected farming and ranching practices, helping them to be more profitable, efficient, and produce greater yields. This in turn has made agriculture in South Dakota pro profitable, turning it into the economic powerhouse that it is today. It probably comes as no surprise that ag is the number one industry in South Dakota, but did you know that agriculture generates 36% of our state's economic activity and employs over 80,000 South Dakotans? Every year, agriculture has a $21 billion economic impact on our state. How did it get to be this way? Let's take a look at crop yields from the 1930s and compare them to recent crop yields. According to the South Dakota Crop and Livestock Recording Service, 1930 corn yields were 24 bushels per acre and wheat was almost 12 bushels an acre. Then the Dust Bowl and Great Depression hit, and corn yields plummeted to only seven bushels an acre in 1933, with wheat being a mere four bushels an acre. This was due to poor conservation efforts, drought, grasshoppers, and a collapse in prices as a result of the Great Depression. Then conservation ideas started to kick in, and practices started to change. This, along with increasingly better machinery technology, began to change farming for the better. In 2012, the United States Department of Agriculture reported that South Dakota's wheat yields were 45.8 bushels an acre, corn stood at 101 bushels an acre, and oats held 68 bushels an acre. The 2010 National Crop Production Rankings listed South Dakota as the number two producer of both alfalfa and oats, the number four producer of hay, and the number seven producer of corn. Our state's livestock industry also does consistently well. South Dakota ranks number one in bison and pheasant production, number six with sheep, and number eight in cattle production. Our recent livestock inventory showed that South Dakota had 3.7 million cattle, 1.2 million hogs, 92,000 dairy cows, and 275,000 sheep. But with all of these animals to feed, farms must be efficiently productive and use a variety of conservation methods to stay sustainable. Each year, South Dakota beef and dairy cattle alone will consume an average of 19.4 million bushels of corn, 31,756 tons, million tons of soybean meal, 
and 3.6 million tons of hay and silage. Conservation is critically important to our state and country because of the economic impact it has. When conservation practices are utilized, farmers and ranchers are able to produce more crops and livestock to help feed not only the United States, but the rest of the world. In 1940, the average farmer fed about 19 people annually. Today, that number has changed drastically. Now, one South Dakota producer raises enough food to feed 155 people annually. Because of, because of conservation, farming agriculture has changed tremendously since my grandfather first started farming. Remember that farmer I told you about earlier? Now picture this, that farmer's son climbing into a tractor with a no-till drill attached to it, planting and fertilizing his crops with one trip across the field, expecting a crop that previous generations only dreamed of. Thank you.